this week on the show. <laughs> I'm in Mexico to discover how a river cleanup is getting on and meet this little local. Oh, this is so incredible. Simon's here with tips on how to carry on traveling despite the cost of living crisis. I'm traveling by train through Germany on what I regard as the best rail deal ever. And a day trip to a Thai prison, anyone? This week, I'm in the ancient wetlands of Xochimilco in the south of Mexico City, a UNESCO World Heritage Site and one of the country's must-see destinations. This sprawling network of canals was first built by the Aztecs and stretches over 180 kilometers. Not surprisingly, the area now attracts masses of tourists every year. Check out all these amazing boats, they're so colorful. These are called trachineras. I'm here to meet Carlos Diaz, one of the best tour guides in town. Good to meet you. But this isn't your typical sedate trip along the river. I was honestly expecting to go on a quiet little boat ride, but this place is a real fiesta. Okay, we're stuck in a traffic jam of like 10 different boats. Tourist boats, shop boats, floating band boats. <laughs> oh, look, there's Mayachi. Yeah. joyful chaos, Porsche like this? Yeah. I want to talk to Carlos about life on the canals. <laughs> That's if I can keep us dry, of course. <laughs> How important is tourism to Xochimilco? Sí, alrededor de 3500 familias este dependen directamente del turismo. Pues principalmente son los los remeros, los artesanos y los planteros. Estaba en las trajineras, mi mi papá me traía y lavaba las trajineras. Es una, un negocio familiar que tiene una tradición de más de, de 100 años. How has the area changed in that time? Las casas que se construyen alrededor afectan los canales. Entonces, este, eh, generan contaminación. La gente viene a vivir a la zona chinampera y empieza a construir casas. Eh, el drenaje lo, lo, lo construyen hacia los canales. Y otra cosa que afecta mucho, y ahí hay que comentárselos a los turistas, arrojan la basura al, al canal, ¿no? Entonces, eso también eh, pro provoca contaminación. I mean, having grown up here in this area, how do you feel when you like, notice all these changes? Es triste. Es probable que Xochimilco pierda el sello de, pat de patrimonio cultural por la UNESCO. Y la gente que depende de esta actividad económica, pues se va a ver afectada. But the problem is much bigger than just tourism. These wetlands are the lungs of Mexico City and provide the capital with around a third of its drinking water and a huge amount of food. <laughs> Professor Rodriguez Vasquez has been monitoring this pollution and it's pretty plain to see why this situation is getting worse. Well, this isn't the most beautiful spot in Mexico City, is it? Yeah. Can you tell me exactly just how badly the water is contaminated here? Well, it's very highly contaminated with pathogens, chemicals, pesticides, hormones, 
and uh, human waste also. Wow. Yeah, and here we have a lot of places like this. So this is not the only drain like this no. in Mexico City? No, 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 we have a lot. Wow. Not only does this pollution contaminate the water, but the dangerous pathogens can also evaporate into the air and be absorbed into the crops that are grown in the wetlands. You know, the moment you leave behind the super busy embarcaderos of Xochimilco, it feels like you enter a completely different world. There's so much wildlife here, so much greenery, it's just so serene. But even out here in the more remote areas of the wetlands, the pollution is endangering one of Mexico's most iconic animals. This strange-looking but much-loved axolotl. What's so special about these little creatures? Tiene una sus pares de branquias son hermosos. Puede respirar por las branquias. Tienen la capacidad de, de mimetizarse, de tomar la coloración de su hábitat. Son oscuros porque están en, en su hábitat, en los canales, en los apantles, y hay sedimento. Eso es maravilloso. Eso sumado a la mmm, capacidad de regeneración que tienen de extremidades, órganos, e inclu incluido el cerebro. Oh my god, it's so smooth, it's so lovely. It's like yes, holding sir. a baby. <gasps> the axolotl is not only endemic to Mexico, its population is limited to these wetlands, and the worsening pollution is threatening its very survival. <gasps> this is the most incredible thing I've ever done in my life. Okay, put him back. Mm -hmm. okay, go Thankfully, back. the conservation project Armando runs here has been a great success, and as a result, axolotl numbers are now increasing across the wetlands. De que para no perder esta magnífica especie, tenemos que trabajar, trabajar en equipo, todos los, los, los que habitamos, de alguna manera los canales Ochimilco, que vivimos y estamos aquí. Y como es, es re recuperando su hábitat. Armando's work is brilliant, but to fully restore the area to its former glory, Ultimately, the pollution needs to be tackled. Luckily, my friend Professor Rodriguez Vasquez may just have identified a simple but effective solution. In a rather basic looking lab in the wetlands, her team have invented a system that produces tiny bubbles called nanobubbles, which can be pumped into the polluted water. How does the science behind this actually work? Yeah, we create the nanobubbles with solar energy. So uh, these nanobubbles can attack or can destroy the contaminants. As well as tackling the pollution, these nanobubbles also help to oxygenate the water, breathing life again into the waterways. Honestly, your lab looks, everything here looks pretty simple. Yeah, it's very simple. It's very cheap and also very easy to, to manage. And that's the best kind of technology, right? When it's simple, straightforward, accessible, sustainable. Exactly, sustainable. And what's even more encouraging is that this simple but effective technology can be used on trajineras, so the tourist boats can be a part of the solution in the fight against pollution. That's the button that started all. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Ready? Yeah. You can see the nano bubbles. Oh, it's working. That's so cool. You know, it's amazing to think that this piece of tech is actually cleaning the canals as we speak. Amazing, hey? Para mí es un orgullo porque voy a contribuir para que por generaciones estos estos canales se mantengan limpios y que mis hijos y mis nietos y mis bisnietos como a mí me tocó que mi tatarabuelo pues estuviera en esta actividad eh, turística y que Xochimilco siga siendo patrimonio cultural por la UNESCO y que también se, sigamos siendo un lugar de tradición y costumbre para el turista nacional y extranjero. La verdad, muy feliz de pertenecer a este proyecto.
And what these projects across the wetlands hopefully show is that with a bit of creativity and collaboration, tourists can play a key role in helping to maintain stunning places like this. And that's got to be good news. And if you're planning a trip here anytime soon, here's a few things to think about. In Western Mexico, the world's largest gathering of mariachi bands will come together on the 30th of August to kick off a two-week festival dedicated to the country's most traditional folk music. The celebrations will begin with a huge parade through the city of Guadalajara, where mariachi bands from as far away as Japan will all play together. You can expect workshops, lectures and plenty of inescapable impromptu performances throughout the city for the duration of the festival. If you prefer the calm of the ocean, why not explore the second largest barrier reef in the world? The Mesoamerican Barrier Reef runs along the Caribbean coastline of the Yucatan Peninsula and is home to 66 species of coral, several hundred species of fish, as well as sea turtles, dolphins and whale sharks. Remember though, reef environments are fragile to human impact, so be sure to dive with a responsible provider. For six days from the 14th of October, some of the world's finest classic cars will be covering over 3,000 kilometers on a route from Oaxaca to Durango for La Carrera Panamericana. Celebrating its 35th year, the Pan American Race is one of the most important and longest road rally type races in the world. It used to be dubbed the most dangerous, but safety standards have come a long way in recent years. And of course, if you're in Mexico on November 1st and 2nd, then you won't be able to avoid one of the country's biggest events. More commonly known as the Day of the Dead or Dia de los Muertos, the national holiday honors the deceased. And many believe that on this day, the border between the spirit world and the real world dissolves. And so relatives often spend the night by the graves of their loved ones. Stay with us, because still to come, Simon has some cost-saving travel tips. If you are flying, then try to travel with cabin baggage only. And Thailand opens its prison doors to tourists. So don't go away. and welcome to this month's guide. Well, summer is here and many of us are desperate to get away. But with rising costs and tricky travelling, the prospect can be off-putting. After some scenes of airport chaos, airlines have trimmed millions of seats from their planned summer schedules, causing fares on some popular routes to soar. So consider going by sea. Britain has excellent ferry links with France, Spain, the Netherlands and Ireland. There's loads of capacity this summer and you can get some really good rail sale deals, such as about £40 one way from many British stations to Ireland and you get a generous baggage allowance. If you are flying, then try to travel with cabin baggage only. I manage just with this and it meets all known airline rules. You won't need to queue up to check in. There's no chance of your bag being sent to the far side of the earth and no need to wait around at the carousel at the far end when you should be beginning your adventure. Best of all, you'll save cash. And choose your day of travel carefully. For holiday flights, Saturday and Sunday are in strongest demand, with Friday and Monday also busy. Tuesday and Wednesday are likely to see the lowest fares and the thinnest crowds. Many viewers have been in touch about car rental rates. Yes, they're higher than ever this summer. During the pandemic, many car rental firms sold off their fleets, and now they can't get enough vehicles to match demand. So choose somewhere with excellent public transport to stretch your holiday budget. Along Spain's Costa Blanca and Costa del Sol, as well as the Portuguese Algarve, there are excellent coastal railways with frequent trains and subsidised fares, making them excellent value. 
Almost anywhere in Asia, from eastern Turkey to Singapore, public transport is cheaper, more reliable and safer than self-drive. Choose the train when you can, such as the amazing line through Uzbekistan, paralleling the Silk Road from Bukhara to Samarkand and on to the capital, Tashkent. If you are on the road, simply choose the highest category of coach you can afford. America is in love with the highway, but increasingly cities have reliable public transport connections, such as the Brightline link from Miami via Fort Lauderdale and soon opening all the way to Orlando. And long distance buses are making a comeback, with one firm promising a private jet experience on the four hour run from Washington to New York City. This summer, I'm traveling by train through Germany on what I regard as the best rail deal ever. In the entire month of July or August, you pay just nine euros for a ticket taking you anywhere in the country on all but the fastest trains. The ticket is also valid on city transport, meaning you can experience the amazing dangling tram of Wuppertal, the closest public transport gets to a theme park ride. Stretch your holiday funds the furthest though, swap the med for the Baltic beaches of Eastern Europe. A trip to the coast of Poland, Lithuania, Latvia or Estonia is surprisingly affordable. And the Black Sea coastline of Bulgaria and Romania also offers outstanding value. Going west, Canada is significantly cheaper than the US, though in both nations, remember, you're now expected to tip 20%. For further flung adventures, wait until later in the year for tropical sun at affordable prices. Two favourites of mine, the beaches and heritage of Kerala in southern India and the long-time backpacker favourite Vietnam. Airfares in November from the UK are barely half what they are in peak summer. Well, I hope some of those ideas have stimulated your travel appetite. Whether you're hoping to warm up or cool off this summer, where there's a will, there's a way. Good luck. Thanks, Simon. OK, next up we're off to Thailand, where the government is slowly turning some of its prisons into tourist attractions. Rayong Central Prison, close to the capital Bangkok, has been one of the first ones to open up. And we've been given special permission to go along and film there to check out what tourists can expect to see.จำเพราะนั้นผู้ขังที่อยู่ในจำชั่วคราวที่ที่ในจำกลางระยองเนี่ยก็มีทุกประเภทคดีทั้งหญิงทั้งชายและก็โทษตั้งแต่โทษต่
ทั้งเงินทองทั้งเพื่อนเมียอะไรหายหมดครับผมก็เสียใจครับแต่ว่าพลาดมาแล้วก็ต้องทนอยู่ให้ได้ครับดีครับได้ได้ใกล้ชิดบุคคลภายนอกมากขึ้นครับครับผมก็คือว่าเหมือนทางเขาก็ไม่รังเกียจเราที่ว่าเราเป็นคนคุกได้ครับเดี๋ยวออกไปผมก็ว่าจะออกไปก็จะหาร้านกาแฟทําครับผมเพราะว่าผมก็เคยได้ฝึกมาจากในเรือนจําครับผมก็จะเอาความรู้ตรงนี้ไปใช้ในอนาคตครับผมหลังพ้นโทษThe island has traditionally treated prisons as no-go areas. They're not terribly sanitary. Uh, they're usually overcrowded. I think that the Department of Corrections wants to be seen as, uh, you know, joining a wider coalition of government agencies, encouraging tourism, encouraging people to come back to Thailand. They're certainly going to have to somehow improve conditions in some ways, at least on the surface. But the question is whether anything really changes. เพราะฉะนั้นแนวคิดเดิมๆที่เราเคยเห็นรับรู้หรืออาจจะดูอย่างในหนังในทีวีอะไรแล้วแต่ที่เป็นสภาพเรือนจําที่มีลูกกรงอะไรน่ากลัวน่ากลัวเนี่ยมันจะไม่มีที่นั่นเพราะนั้นน่าจะไปดูทีนี้พอไปดูที่นั่นเสร็จเนี่ยมันไม่ได้ดูแค่เพียงว่าคนที่เป็นผู้ขังสามารถทํางานโดยอิสระในพื้นที่สวนป่าอะไรก็แล้วแต่นะครับกลับมาพอถึงเวลาเขาก็กลับมานอนที่ที่ห้องนอนของตัวเองเราเจอกันใหม่ในรายการ Sochi Milko. Safe travels, and I'll see you very soon. Bye bye.